today we're going to talk about trail blazing women. It's that Salesforce propaganda partnering with Deloitte that was live streamed. Hundreds of thousands of people watched it, maybe even millions on International Women's Day. I want to talk about that little sermon that went on there. And I want that to open our eyes to realize, hey, these businesses are preaching their gospel. Why shouldn't we as Christians be preaching ours? It's really funny how we aren't supposed to talk about politics and religion in the workplace, but here we are spewing your equality religion, Salesforce, all throughout the internet to see, and that's acceptable. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to break down this video today. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show with a friend, subscribing. If you like this show, I'd really appreciate you sharing it, tagging somebody, you know, all that good stuff. We're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Over to Fight, Laugh, Feast or flfnetwork.com. Put in HGBT in the memo field. You'll get that mug right over there. Tons of great benefits. $100 off our um, conference that's coming out in October, or not coming out, that is, is scheduled for October 1st through 3rd. Hope to see you there. I will be there. To shake all your hands, answer all your questions. Just be available. Look forward to hanging out with the Fight, Laugh, Feast members and all of you guys. Really uh, love seeing you guys, love meeting you guys whenever we get a chance to do stuff. So I'm going to be there. You should be there too. If you have any questions, comments, you can reach out to me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. Speaking of somebody who just recently reached out to me, said yesterday that they thought I was saying that they should sell their stocks now. First of all, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't listen to anything I say for financial advice. Go get a financial advisor yourself. But what I did not mean to say, if I said that or if it was construed that way or I was just poorly communicating, I'm not telling you you should sell your stocks now. That's like the worst idea in the world for you to do. If you still have your stocks right now with how low the stock market is, you just have to hold on for the ride. Change your password. Give it to somebody else. Don't sell. Hold on. I was speaking about myself and how I sold before the market dipped when the coronavirus was coming out. And I said, I'm going to wait to buy, which you don't have to sell to buy more later. You can buy when the news from the coronavirus cycles through the United States. Again, I don't know anything about this virus. It seems kind of sh weird. There's some things going on they're not telling us. Whatever that means, I don't know. But for me, I think my goalpost is once all the news cycles through the United States, that it's gone through all the states and everyone's had it that's going to have it, and the news cycle's kind of gone on, the election's happening or whatever, and that's when I think the bottom is going to be. Again, we have the oil prices with the Russians and the Saudi Arabia and all that stuff, but that's between them, even though it's going to affect oil prices for oil companies in the United States. The stock market isn't a majority of oil companies. So that is my clarification on that. And that's why I appreciate you guys reaching out to me. Seriously, I read them all, all the emails, all the tweets, all the comments, except last weekend, actually, because, man, I really pissed off the atheists, the ex-Christian people. And there were so many comments, I just couldn't keep up with them. But I tried. I tried. What else do we need to talk about today? I think that's it. Let's just get into it. I wanted to start this off. There's a video. We're going to go through and critique it. I know a lot of you guys love that. There's this tweet, though. I don't even know who this is, but I retweeted it, and it says this. I don't need a women's empowerment movement. My power is found in Christ alone. Amen, amen, amen. She goes on to say, I need a women's encouragement movement, one that will spurn me to faithfully love my husband and children in the hard moments and to seek God's glory in all moments. Hashtag encouragement over empowerment. She gets it. She gets it. That what women need, what we all need, is encouragement. But what she said at the end of that paragraph, where I paused for a second and I said, amen, 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 is my power is found in Christ alone. With a contrast of this movement of empowering women, stemming off the critical race theory, stemming off the Marxism, Power is not found in Christ. Power is found by taking it from others through means of victimhood, of power structures, of attacking, destroying, and stealing 
what is rightfully other people's. And this is really an interesting dichotomy because I feel like this happens in a lot of different areas. Either you can take your power from Christ, you can take your worth, you can take your fulfillment, you can take your value from Christ who gives freely, his cup overflows and never deplenishes. You can never take too much from God. Contrasted with when we, even in our spouses, when we have them and we are trying to take from them, their, our fulfillment's found in other relationships. Our fulfillment is found in our employment. Our fulfillment is found in our careers, in our victimhood, or whatever it is. You're constantly taking from other people that you will destroy. And that's what these people are doing. This does not build up. This does not edify. This does not love others. This destroys. They say it's loving, they say it's unity, but there is no peace and there is no unity in this movement. There's none. Just like we were talking about last week or yesterday. <laughs> My mind was thinking we were in a weekly podcast, we're in a daily podcast. Thinking about the other day, talking about how the transgender dancers are going after their own liberal people that they're not acceptant of transgender dancers. Because an ideology, a philosophy that is looking to take power from other people to give it to themselves via victimhood, via identity, via culture, via preferences, via sexual identity, whatever it is, you always have to find somebody to consume. And so it's never unifying. It's constantly devouring. You're a consumer. You're a virus. You're a coronavirus. You're <laughs> You're not a coronavirus, but you're a parasite. You're feeding off somebody else and you're not giving back. That is what these equality movements are. Now, again, there's a difference between treating people equally. We all have the same value because we're all made in the image of God. But that does not mean that everyone deserves equal, the same things, so on and so forth. So keep that in mind as we are going through this. Or before we get into this video, we're going to talk about Kingsman Grooming Products. They're our sponsor. Go over to kingsmangroomingpros.com. Get a sweet beard like this. Comfortable, stylish, soft, definitely not itchy. And support a great company. Go over to kingsmangroomingpros.com. Kingsmangroomingpros.com. Put in HDBT in the memo field. You'll get 10% off. You'll get better quality products than whatever you have now. 10% off. And you'll be supporting a Christian company. So go get nice, smooth, comfortable skin that everyone's going to like. It smells great. It's not overpowering. It's very subtle. You're going to like the way you look. You're going to like the way you smell. You're going to like how you don't itch. And you're going to really like supporting Christian people. So go over to kingsmangroomingpros.com. Get great quality products, 10% off, and support brothers in Christ. Kingsmangroomingpros.com. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. Oh, I just love that music. It's all cue the motions and heartstrings. At a very young age, we learn to make a distinction between you and me. At a very young age, you learn to make a distinction. And like, oh, you know, you're probably right. You go, but this is the this is <laughs> you gotta catch these people. See, it's not just enough that they're going after the people that they work that work for them. They're not trying to just create a culture in their own companies, you see they're doing this online, they're doing this on the internet, they're saying they have this message that this starts at a young age. They want your children. And this is why we see transgender people twerking little kids that are looking like they're tortured out of their minds because they know that they need to get them young. And they're coming after our children because it starts at a very young age. Cue the heartstring music. Simple, right? But what if somehow? What if somehow? I could see the world from your perspective. And you could see it from mine. What if you could see the world from my perspective? That could never happen for one. But for two, we're gonna go on and get a lecture about how we can't use other people's cultures for parties. We can't have a cultural appropriation. You don't want us to see from your perspective. You don't want us to have anything to do with your perspective. You just want to take power from me. And if you start dissecting all of these little arguments that they're making, these 
points in their sermon that they're making, they contradict because they are a consuming religion. They are a consuming philosophy. They are going to be taking power from anyone they can, which eventually leads to themselves of self-destruction. Their message will never be coherent. Think for a second. I know all your hopes and dreams. E tudo que te incomoda. Or aap ko bhi wo pata chale mere bare mein. You know what it's like to have a daughter who struggles with is she black enough? Is she white enough? They're going through all of these different groups, victims, basically. And they're lumping in the homosexuals, the people that are half black, half white, which to me is just incredibly insulting. Not only are you lumping in the homosexual lifestyle with the racial li lifestyle, but they're also incorporating the deaf, handicapped people. There's a person that I believe later on in the clip she can't uh, hear at all. There's people signing in this video. They're lumping in disabilities with sexual sin, with this racial these issues that they are having and they're putting it all together like it's one big problem. And so this is what they're doing. They're taking as many groups as they can to, uh, to create a alliance. They call themselves allies to create a coalition where everybody can feel bad for themselves in their own way. And so then we could take it from the people the white males, the people in power in the hierarchy. That's what they're doing. They're trying to just be a glob and absorb all of these different kinds of people that can claim victimhood so that they can overtake the man. A single white or single, I guess you don't have to be single, white male patriarch Christian Americans. Oh, it just really bugs me that they incorporate into this uh, handicapped people. It drives me nuts. Like, does anybody think that we shouldn't be accommodating for people with disabilities? If they can do the job, if we can make accommodations, I would do that in a heartbeat if there was somebody who wanted to work for one of my companies. No problem whatsoever. You would know what it's like to not have enough confidence to express your ideas. You'd know what it would be like for people to take your culture and turn it into a theme party. Okay, so the first one in there, the first lady, she is a lesbian, she has the flag on her uh, the you know the rainbow flag on her pin and she said she if you wouldn't know what it's like to have the confidence well actually let here let's me say it again to make sure i really know what it says you would know what it's like to not have enough confidence to express your ideas you wouldn't have enough confidence to express your ideas and this has nothing to do <laughs> Ugh, this has nothing to do with your homosexual lifestyle. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong or whatever, but if you don't have confidence, that, what does that have to do with anybody else? You don't find your confidence in somebody else. You ultimately need to find your confidence in Christ and who he, whom he made you to be. And you obviously aren't pulling from that. You're trying to find it in your own homosexual lifestyle and your own humanistic lifestyle. But what confidence isn't related to being heterosexual. Come on, people. And then the second lady here, we just heard this lecture about my perspective, your perspective. If you, what if you could be in my shoes? What if I could be in your shoes? And then she says this. You'd know what it would be like for people to take your culture and turn it into a theme party. So we're supposed to relate. We're supposed to identify. We're supposed to be able to know exactly what it's like to think and be like you. But we can't have parties in your culture. We can't have a Mexican party. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? And by the way. Growing up in California most of my life, living here in Florida now, I don't know anybody from a Latino perspective that is insulted when I go to a Mexican restaurant or to a carniceria, when I want to buy a um, pinata for the kids. They don't care. They like it. They We play soccer together. We eat together. We party together. They're the only people that don't want you to have or participate or experience their culture are people that want power from you. Think about it. Like in your own culture, just your own perspective, does it offend you when people want to participate and eat the food you eat and experience the life that you experience? No, it's a compliment. It's a compliment. 
this is a sermon and they're preaching a message and they want your power. They want the power and they want to take it from you. It's a zero sum game with them. Not like us Christians who take our power from Christ, where there's infinite amounts, where we can all win. And see, that's where the power, that's where as Christians, we are victorious. And that is why our relationships that are centered in Christ, in our marriage, in our businesses, that is why there is life in those. That is why these relationships grow stronger. When Jesus is the center of all of our relationships and all of our organizations, there's life, there's power, there's fruit that comes from it because it's our power, our source, our confidence, Everything that we need that these people are complaining about, we can get from Christ and we don't have to pull it from other people at the expense of others, but we can give out life. We can give out confidence. We can give out our resources that we draw on from Christ and give it to others. And that's how eternal life is experienced on earth. But these people are doing it the opposite way. They're saying, I want from you. And so I can feed my own self, my own God. A power play sermon. Ugh. And so they just had this guy signing. For those of you listening on the podcast, just more music signing. What if you could be like and understand what it's like to not hear like me in a silent world? And again, it's just so disgusting that they are trying to leverage the disabilities of people. They're using them. They're using these people for their own agenda. They don't care about them. They don't care about them at all. And you will see that as they eventually get turned on or are turned on when they disagree with the narrative, with the sermon. It's absolutely disgusting. You would know that every time that you say you have a husband, people pause. To be gender non-conforming. To be comfortable being uncomfortable a lot of times. Oh, you feel uncomfortable saying that you have a husband? As you should be. You should feel uncomfortable. That's not how God made you. You need to repent. It's not our problem that you f feel uncomfortable. It's because you are in sin and you need to repent and you need the gospel. And then they have these gender non-conforming people. And it's just, you guys just haven't made me feel comfortable. It's all your fault. We need to be tolerant and you need to let me feel however I feel. And it's all about me. No, no. You need to repent and you need to come to Jesus. But I just, again, we know this. I'm preaching to the choir here, right? Most of you guys are conservative Christians, biblical Christians. But I just want you to see Salesforce, sponsored by Deloitte, is preaching this message. And so I want you to then turn around and realize that you have the same rights to preach your gospel message, the Bible message to the world as well. Don't listen to this crap. Don't give in to it that you can't talk about religion or politics. It's spread out through all of the secular world. And then we got to stop buying that lie. You know what it's like to lose your little brother to HIV. I'm really sorry that you lost your brother to HIV. I'm assuming it's from a homosexual lifestyle. I don't know. It could have been just a blood transfusion where the needle wasn't clean. It could have been from drug use. Who knows what it is? But why are you using that to drive your agenda? What are you getting at? Because I feel sorry for you. Seriously, sin is hard. It's devastating. But what are you doing here? What message are you preaching? We have to be wise, guys. We have to be wise and discerning and realize what they're doing. The music, the sad stories, they're pulling on your heartstrings. How could you possibly not give us what we want? Don't you feel bad? Don't you feel, you know, terrible? Yes, I, I do feel bad. I want you guys to come to Jesus and have eternal life. I want you to have abundant life like we have. But you're not going to take my power and not going to be rulers over us. That's not going to happen. You'd know that there is struggle and pain, but also a lot of hope. Where is your hope? See, isn't it interesting? They have this sin narrative. They have this story of repentance and a path forward. And they have this hope of a utopia. I don't know, whatever their heaven is. But it's kind of sad. You look at her face and it's, you can tell she doesn't even really believe it. What is your hope? Your hope is that you have allies and that you can defeat the evil people. 
that's kind of what they do when they hint at allies, right? If there's allies, there's a, there's a, an opponent. There's somebody they're fighting against. And hey, guess what? That's you and me. But where is your hope? Well, let's start defining terms here. And this is a great opportunity when we find people like this that are talking about this hope that's from this victimhood, this hope from stealing power from people. This is where we need to be infusing the gospel message at our workplaces, in our business, and who we're doing business with, our vendors, our customers. Where is your hope? And when they can't express it, when they can't define it, hey, let me tell you where my hope is. It's in Jesus Christ. And not only do we have eternal life, we have a down payment by the Holy Spirit. But when we submit to God and make him Lord of our lives, of our organizations, of our entities, of our families, here we get to experience that now. That's where the power of the gospel comes in. We don't need to be wishy-washy, big Eva evangelicals. The power is in the gospel and the gospel alone. And suddenly, suddenly, and suddenly we would see that although our lives are very different, they are also very much the same. And that bigger than you and me is us. Navo. And as us, we know this. You don't have to look like us. Worship like us. Live like us. Or love like us. To stand with us. Of course, you'll always be you. And I'll always be me. But there's nothing stopping us. There's nothing stopping us. There's nothing stopping us. There's nothing stopping us from becoming us. Ngote. Needs it to be. Kami. Nosotros. Women. Nos. We're stronger as us. We're stronger as allies. Be an equality ally. Equality for all. Hashtag. You don't have to be me. You don't have to be you. Or you can't be you and I am me. We're not going to be each other. But we need to all come together and form an alliance against the Axis. Right? That's what it's applying. Allies, Axis, and allies. I love that board game. This is their message. Hey, hey, you could do you and I can do me, but we need to be us. What does that mean? It means that I'm not going to judge you. You're not going to judge me for now. We need to jump on this boat of the same narrative and go after the other side. It's like, hey, you could do you, your sexual sin, your transgenderism, your homosexual lifestyle. You do you and I'll do me, but we need to come together so we can fight against oppression. That's what Salesforce and Deloitte is sponsoring for International Women's Day. Ironic, right? They're taking an International Women's Day, which I said in jest on Twitter that I was like, I wonder where International Man's Day is. I never heard of it. Apparently there is one, so I had to delete that tweet. But they're taking this women's International Women's Day and tagging on all of these different issues, preaching this sermon, this narrative that you guys have to be on board. Yeah, you could do your thing. It's like the Romans. As long as you bow to the Roman Caesar, you can worship whoever you want to worship. As long as you say Caesar is king, then you could do you. Like That's what we're doing here. You could do you, but you need to bow down and worship that you have to be accepting of what we tell you is accepting in our culture. And that's what Salesforce, that's what Deloitte is pushing. Now, I, I did it again. I tried to cut off I had like another two minutes I was going to do, but we're running late. There's a whole other section where they talk about the programs and the sponsorships and all of these things. But just know that these secular businesses are not secular. They're preaching their humanist religion. And so we need to be too. There's no excuse for us not to be as bold as they are about their message. There's no excuse. We should be bolder. But somehow we bought into the lie that our religion can't be shared, but theirs can. Our perspective, our worldview can't be shared, but theirs can be. They don't have to participate in our worldview, but we have to participate, accept, and bow down to theirs. You will bake this cake. You will participate. You will bow down and serve our gods. 
but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will preach that till my dying breath, and I encourage you to do the same. Let's go out and be successful and proclaim the name of Jesus. 